What's up everybody, I'm Derek, this is Rocking E Forge, and today is part 9 of Weird Weapons of History, a series where I research and briefly discuss interesting historical edged weapons that I find pretty unique. Now today's Weird Weapon of History is the Kukri. Now this is the first Weird Weapon of History that I, I can actually show in person. This is a Kukri that I bought a number of years ago uh, when I was just in high school. Now the Kukri, or Kukuri, is a large forward curving knife or machete, which is most notably associated with the elite Gurkha fighters of Nepal, and is, in fact, the national weapon of Nepal. Now, the reason I chose the Kukri as today's weird weapon of history is because of its fairly unique blade shape and design, similar really only to the Greek Copus or the Iberian Falcata, throughout history, its rich association with the Gurkha warriors of Nepal, and because it's fairly well known. Now, the Kukri, like so many other weapons in this series, originated on the Indian subcontinent. It's unclear by the various sources that I looked at quite where it is most heavily associated with the nation or the country of Nepal. However, sources differ on whether it originated in Nepal itself or whether it descended from the Greek Copus or the Iberian Falcata. There does seem to be a few sources that suggest that the theory that it descended from the Greek weapons is in fact unfounded just based on the stretch of time between the use of the Copus or the Falcata and the advent of the Kukri in Nepal, no one really has a definitive time frame or explicit location where the Kukri can be attributed to, unfortunately. However, it is the national weapon of Nepal and considered a mighty weapon of the Gurkha warriors, and as such, it is most heavily associated with Nepal as a result. Now, the Kukri is best known for that forward curve to that blade, a fairly tip-heavy and thick belly to that blade, designed for chopping and hacking. However, they did vary in size from a fairly short single-handed blade all the way up to a fairly long machete-style blade. Now, unlike this blade, they did typically have a hidden tang or a through tang construction with handles consisting primarily of hardwoods or bone or water buffalo horn and did have a distinctive ridge along the center of the handle and a flared pommel on that handle as well. Some styles also had disc-shaped ornaments at the ricasso and at the pommel, and I'm not sure how prevalent those were or how common that style was, but those blades did exist in the grand history of the Kukri. Additional well-known features of the Kukri, again not seen on this blade, was a two-part notch known as the Cho filed into the Ricasso section of the blade with a small prong sticking out in the middle of this notch. Now this prong has been suggested throughout more recent history to have been a way for a Gurkha warrior or a wielder of a Kukri to prick their finger and blood the blade, so to speak, when it was drawn, as there is a concept or idea out there that when the Kukri is drawn, it must be blooded prior to putting it back into its sheath. However, this is by all accounts a myth, and in reality, that prong or the notch or some combination of those seems to be more heavily associated with symbolic or religious beliefs of the people in the area that the Kukri was popularized in. Some sources suggest that the notch and the prong symbolize the hoof of a cow or the udders of a cow in some ways and is meant to dictate that a cow should not be slain using a Kukri or ever based on the significance of cows in Nepalese and Indian culture. I couldn't corroborate this with many 
sources, but there were more than one source that seemed to suggest it was related to a cow. However, another YouTuber, Scala Gladiatoria, seems to have done some research into this matter, and his own interviews with Nepalese people who carry kukris seem to suggest that the symbolic meaning of the notch has been lost to history for the Nepalese people and has simply become an aesthetic design feature in the Kukri that is just heavily associated with the Kukri and the Gurkhas and as such has just continued forward in the making of Kukris ever since. Now, some sources suggest Wikipedia, that there are two main types or variations of the kukri. The thinner eastern variation of the kukri, which tends to be a long and relatively slim blade, very elegant and typically fairly ornate, as well as the broader, more heavily leaf-shaped western variation of the kukri. This image showing the large disc-shaped guard and pommel of that kukri handle specifically. It's unclear whether this was associated with the western style or simply a design feature that was incorporated into either style. However, of those variations, each came in a wide variety of blade shapes and sizes, and both styles seems to have been used throughout Nepal throughout its history. As far as use goes, the kukri seems to be a predominantly utilitarian or utility knife for the people of Nepal, typically carried by some sources accounts all members of Nepalese society as simply a way to clear brush or use as a kitchen utensil in some cases, peeling potatoes. Pretty much anything that you can use a knife for, the kukri is just that utility blade for the people of Nepal. It is, however, heavily associated, especially in iconography or symbology of the warriors as the symbol of the Gurkhas, an elite warriors of Nepal, and has been used in many conflicts throughout the history of Nepal. The Gurkhas fought against the East India Company. Around the year 1814, the British decided to invade the Indian subcontinent, or what was then known as Gorkha, what is now considered to be modern-day Nepal, and their troops were pushed back by the very capable and very deadly Gurkha warriors using various weapons, but including the Kukri. Eventually that area came under British rule and the Gurkha warriors became an elite fighting force for the British military and saw action in World War I, World War II, and various conflicts all the way up through the conflict in Afghanistan. All right. There are numerous stories about Gurkha warriors and their prowess in especially World War I, World War II, and more recent conflicts like in Afghanistan. However, I found one from March of 1945 revolving around Ban Bagta Gurung seeming to be in the Pacific campaign against the Japanese, where the British Bravo company that he was in was attacking a strongly held Japanese fortification. Now his company had taken a number of casualties and were in a foxhole or trench of some sort, were pinned down by a sniper in a tree, and no one could move or otherwise attempt to flank the sniper in order to take him out and Gurung bravely stood up out of the foxhole and went face to face with the sniper in order to win, so to speak, and dispatch the sniper using his own rifle. He then proceeded to charge to the next upcoming enemy's foxhole and clear it by himself using grenades as he was out of ammo at this time. He then proceeded to crawl to the next foxhole, dispatching the next Japanese soldiers with his bayonet. And finally, Banbagta reached a Japanese bunker. Now he jumped onto the roof of this bunker and threw two smoke grenades into the window or door or some somehow flushing the Japanese soldiers within out into the open to be dealt with using his kukri. He then proceeded to enter the bunker and actually dispatched the remaining soldiers in the bunker using nothing but a rock. This man was absolutely fearless and most certainly highlights the fearless dedication and military prowess associated with the Gurkha people 
and really highlights the rich military history associated with the Kukri itself. Now, not only is the Kukri an incredible historical weapon, it also is fairly well known throughout pop culture and has been seen in movies such as in Austin Powers, wielded by Will Ferrell's character in said movie, video games like Dead Island and Assassin's Creed Syndicate, as well as the final round weapon of Forged in Fire Season 2 Episode 6. Alright, if I missed anything or got anything wrong in this video, please let me know down in the comments section. And while you're down there, let me know what weapon you'd like me to cover next. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you want to support me and the channel further, please consider becoming an honorary striker on my Patreon. That link is in the description below the video. And as always, keep on rocking.